so excited to have a craft in with you all tonight. We're going to be scrapbooking and talking about the new paper crafting kit for the Kiwi Club. It's called Grow a Happy Life. Uh, this kit, um, it was this month's kit that went out to Kiwi Club members. We're going to be, uh, creative partner Jenny Prosser is going to be hosting this craft in. She's going to be using the paper crafting kit. Uh, paper and templates for tonight's craft and Ginny if you want to introduce yourself and say hello and uh, if you're joining us on Facebook please drop a comment and say hi hello everyone this is Jenny from beautiful California um I have a sw sweater on but um boy it was warm out there today I just got back from Concord and um it was a beautiful day well, that is very exciting. I'm glad someone's experiencing good weather. If you're in Idaho, where headquarters of Kiwi Lane is located, you know that it has been snowing and or raining for the past week and a half. Oh, yes. My daughter lives there in Boise, so. Yeah, it, it's going to get better, hopefully. We are manifesting good weather, and I think that this month's paper crafting kit is perfect. Growing a happy life. I'm very excited to plant a garden this year. I've been seeing um, a lot of positive comments in the community about people talking about how gardening is one of their favorite uh, hobbies or pastimes and that they think this paper resonates with them. So hopefully we can manifest that into the, into the universe for good weather. If you're just joining us, a uh, creative partner, Ginny Prosser is gonna be creating with this month's Kiwi Club kit. I see some laurel crescents. I see some tiny plants and I see some rings on her layout. So it looks like she is going to be featuring some new product as well. We did uh, launch the new product earlier in the month of February, Laurel Crescents and Rings 2.0. I'll drop a link in the chat. If you haven't had a chance to check those out, please do. Uh, Ginny, do you see the comments pop up? I do, I do. Uh, Donna Swift from Virginia. Paula, hi Paula. I've, I see all your re names that I recognize, people that have been following all my posts. Oh, Missouri too, Sharon. Wow. New York. Oh, I'm excited. I was telling my granddaughters that I just went shopping with and, and dropped them off um, that I was going live. And they said, the one asked me how far. I said, I don't know, maybe New York. And look at there's Anne Seward, Seward from New York. So I'm really excited to have all of you join me. And um, <clears throat> as Sonia told, said, um, I look like I'm all bundled up. But uh, last time I didn't like, like how I looked in the, the video from the side. So I decided to kind of hide my full physique, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, as Sonia said, I'm, I'm trying to use the kit uh, the templates that came in the kit. I love tiny plants. Um, one of my favorite is lacy trims. Now the pictures that I'm showing are not the pictures that I would use on this layout. <clears throat> they were just some that I had, but I wanted to be able to show you what your pictures could look like. This is my grandson who, who lives in Boise in Idaho and his cousin who lives in Spokane. And he's such a gentleman. He's helping her at the uh, drinking fountain. And this is him hanging out. So what I wanted to point out is I have a four by six in here, but if we took the circle off this ring, you could do a five by seven in here. The reason I put the ring in is because I knew I didn't have a five by seven, I'd have to do a four by six. So this eliminates the extra background paper showing. <coughs> and I'm going to let you go. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. I'm gonna oh, that's okay. That's I'm going to okay. let you teach your class. I'm going to head out. Um, just remember at the end of your craft and when you get done to hit end on the Zoom on your phone. I um, will. Sonia, thank you as always so much for yes, doing this and for 
and helping me figure out this technology. Oh, you're doing fantastic. If you need anything, just let me know. I'll hop back on, okay? Okay, okay. thanks. Bye. Bye. So I have two pictures here, but if they were smaller pictures, you could group a whole bunch. <coughs> and that's not even saying that you have to use this ring on here. Um, I happen to want to use it to show you um, that it will work with overlaying uh, other uh, pictures like so. So I have picked the background paper um, and I like this one for going with all the papers that came in the kit. There was also, oh, by the way, if you hear whistling and noises and stuff, it's my parrot, uh, Chrissy. She's in with my husband, but she can hear my voice. And so she's responding to me. Um, <coughs> I was gonna put her in here with this and maybe that would keep her quiet. But then if she starts talking like mad, I'll never get a word in edgewise. So I'm gonna start, <coughs> excuse me, with the rings. And what I've done is, oh, I've got another light to turn on. What am I thinking? No wonder it's so dark in here. That should help. Just a second, let me turn the other one on. And that should help. There, that's a little better. Um, I put up my side table over here and that way you can see me do my tracing and uh, it'll help you um, get an idea of what I'm doing here. So for the rings, I'm gonna take out the pictures. And I'm going to take out the rings. Now I'm going to use <clears throat> this paper and we're going to use both sides. There's blue and there's a plaid. So it doesn't matter on which side you trace uh, because we're going to use, we can just flip it over on the color that we want. And you may want to use a different side. I hate to demolish it after I get it all laid out. Okay, so I think you all are aware that the rings sit inside each other. And I'm gonna get out the other ring. Might as well cut it. It's kind of like everybody asked, why did we get another full set when we might already have a set? But for the purpose of <clears throat> being able to do your layout with the templates before you cut, if you wanted this size ring here and, the, and another one over here, you'd be able to, um, to do that. So the question was, um, people wanted to know why they got those rings. Well, it was just as easy to manufacture all of them and sell them for the uh, $16 or whatever they were, as it was to just do three of them. So they decided just to do them all and sell them and give them to you that way. Okay, let me see. Connecticut, Georgia. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, Jenny, you're driving. Call you back from Sacramento, okay. So let's trace all our circles. <clears throat> My fingernails are not working today. Um, what was I going to say? So we're going to put them inside each other after we're. All done here. Make that one. And then this one. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I usually don't start right from scratch with a kit. So I have no idea how long this is going to take. But if you drop off, you'll be able to watch it again um, after Sonia puts it up again. Uh, okay. So just stay as long as you wish. And um, we, I have a lot of little detail items that I'm gonna do. 
um, and you may not get them all done or put all your detail on them, but I wanna be able to show you some of the techniques. I know a lot of you have followed me with my techniques of shading and using liquid pearls. I bought some new liquid pearls. They just came in today. They were on Amazon and they were fairly cheap and there were colors that I didn't have. So I was excited about that. Now I'm trying to find the case that they come that I can store them in. That's getting harder and harder to do. Amazon didn't have it. eBay had it, but they wanted as much for the shipping as they did for the case. I'm like, oh uh, yeah, I'm not paying that amount of shipping. Um, I think I've seen them at Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna check out there. Okay. All of our rings are gonna have something hiding the cut line. So we don't have to be particular. We can go straight in. And then just start cutting rings. I turn my rings as I cut, it makes it easier. And I'm not sick, I sniffle because I've been out <clears throat> and everything's blooming here. The doves have been coming. I think I'm gonna have babies in a nest. I think the mom and daddy have decided they're gonna come back. They were here for the past two years. Right out the window over there is um, some hanging plants on my porch that have um, asparagus ferns in. And they, the asparagus ferns aren't very full and they make shade and they like to nestle down in there. I have a nesting box that my neighbor built for me and it hangs on the side of my um, home. But do you think those silly doves want it? No. Now, on his side of his place, they, they sneak in and, and uh, nest in it, but they won't do it on mine. <clears throat> okay. So we're almost done here. As soon as I'm done cutting, I'll look and see what the comments say. Now, if you've cut this in a different color, uh, that you thought maybe you didn't want the plaid, um, that's okay. You can pick out however you want it to look. What I liked was, I'm gonna use the blue over here. And we're going to use the flag over here. <clears throat> the other uh, template you want to get out is I, I'm using Clara Lane, but you want a, can you hear the bird ringing? Because she knows, she thinks I'm talking on the phone. She's quite funny that way. So I was looking for my template, it's stuck right on here. Um, the reason I'm using Clara Lane is it comes up quite high and I wanted it in the background behind my fence here. I'm gonna turn this a little so you can see it, I think, better. Let's see, it's delayed here. What number rings on each page? Okay, so the ring that I'm using here is number six. That was the big one. I'm using five over here, I think it was right? Because then we're going to put um, 
the lacy trim over it. And then we used the smaller one, which is three. So you're gonna have an extra one left over, which is four, and the center. So I just always put those back with my paper. <clears throat> and then um, try to design with the pieces that are left over. So that's how that's gonna look. I'm gonna take that away. Texas. Tony's watching Arkansas. Oh, Valerie, go enjoy your hockey game. You can catch it tomorrow. Louisiana. Georgia. Delaware. Oh, I'm so excited. Your girls are from all over the place. Okay, so we did our rings. <clears throat> Now let's do Clara. So you'll get an idea how this design is going to come together. I'm going to put these over here. Next, we're going to take the paper that has the um, little wheelbarrows on it. And we're going to Trace, Clara laying on that, or if there's another <clears throat> template that you like and you want to use, that's fine also. Now, the funny thing is, is we traced it on the plaid side, and now we have no pencil marks on this. The only place it has pencil marks is the plaid circle over here. So I'm a stickler for paper going in the right direction. The print on the paper has to go in the right direction. I can't stand it when people put their borders on the side and the print's going the wrong direction. So I make sure that I pick a design, which is not that hard, um, to complement the direction. So, let me see if I'm doing this right here. I have this going this way. So I'm going to flip it over. Okay, so I am going to trace on the back of the printed paper because this is a dark printed paper and it's hard to see the pencil line. So I'm tracing in the back. When you do that, you flip your template over because if I didn't, this would be going in the wrong direction. When I'm done, the, the high part of the template will be in the right direction. So if you want to follow me that way, flip over your template. It'll be much easier to see on the apricot colored paper to cut. Um, I'm a little bit older than probably most of you, and um, the eyesight isn't what it used to be. And I try to make it easy on myself. So this is design is only going to take half, a little less than half of, um, and I hardly ever remember to get out my cut to cut straight line. I always use my scissors. I'm, I'm a fussy cutter from way back. Okay, so you see how I'm doing it? It's very easy to see. So this is the wheelbarrow paper. And you'll see when we get done, if I've done it right, that our wheelbarrows will be going in the right direction. Ta -da! So that goes right here. And it's going to hide our cut in this circle. Bless you, honey. My husband. And there's our wheelbarrows there going in the right direction. 
and they go up here on the top of this one. This is a scrapping easel that I'm using with the magnets. If you've followed my um, lives before, you, you know I'm an advocate of, oh, it turned out cute, I like that. <clears throat> Let's see what everybody's saying. I can only watch, looking forward to seeing what you create. Hi from Kentucky. I can never remember which way it goes. What number of rings, I went over that. Wyoming, wow. Hi, Leslie. Okay, now let's cut our Lazy Trims 2. So we're done with this piece of paper and I put it over here. <clears throat> and we're gonna use two floral paper that has little snails on it. Now, when they designed this, they had my, me in mind because the flowers and the snails and the um, green ivy, no matter which way you turn it, there's no wrong or right. They've got snails going each way. And they've got, if you do it this way, the snails are okay. If you do it this way, the snails are okay. So that makes me happy. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the floral and we're gonna use it right here with the plaid. <clears throat> I think we're doing pretty good so far, but it's time-wise. I was panicked because weeks ago I had called my granddaughter, who's just turned 17, and asked her to come over and go shopping for her birthday with me. And she's driving now, and she loves to go to thrift shops, and I take her to the hospice. Um, thrift shop in the small town across the bridge from us <clears throat> in Martinez. And I told her to invite her sister if she wanted. And if her sister wanted to pick up some stuff, we'd consider it um, Easter. So that was fine and they accepted and we had it all planned. And then Kiwi contacted me and asked me if I'd do this live. And I said, oh, okay. And until yesterday, it didn't dawn on me that I was going shopping after my grandkids got out of school at three and I was gonna be with you girls at five. And my daughter called me and said, mom, it takes an hour to get to your house from where we live. Oh, I said, we'll work it out. So I told the girls, don't worry, Gigi Olivia, that's what they call me, Gigi for Grandma Jenny. Gigi Olivia, her credit card with you and then you, when you come back across the bridge you can drop it off to me but those girls man they went in there wham bam they were even the one the younger one who's two years younger who hates shopping she was going like there was a fire on her fanny um and they both did really good i think they each got five or six items uh, one of them got a leather jacket um, Bailey did, and so a vest and some t-shirts and a sweatshirt, and Riley got a long dress and a short dress and a pair of pants and two sweaters and the total for two girls. Oh, and, and Riley got three pairs of earrings. The total for both the girls was only $105. I said to the lady, are you sure? But everything Bailey picked out was on sale for 30% off. And when it's only $10 to begin with, <laughs> it's not much. But they are so conscious of saving the world and not buying large retail and shopping thrift stores. They love it. Um, could be I started them that way. I used to take their baby clothes and trade them in, in a secondhand store where I used to live <clears throat> and keep the credit on the books. And then when they were big enough to walk and talk, when they'd come stay with me, <clears throat> they were three hours away at that time. Um, and I lived up in the mountains. And if you don't know the story, my husband and I lost our home three years ago in the big California fire up in the mountains. So we've relocated down in the Bay Area. But anyhow, so 
they'd come to stay and they'd say, can we go to the toy store? Because the secondhand store had clothes and toys. So <clears throat> they, they would walk in and they got to the point that they got old enough, they'd walk in and say to the owner, so how much credit do we have on the books? So I had to tell her ahead of time, don't tell them the truth because they'll spend it all. I never uh, took any of the money you were entitled to. It was a 60-40 split. You were entitled to your 60%. But I never took it. I just let it run on the books and the girls would just come in and shop. And I had over $450 on the books when the store burned up. But I could go back to the poor people who had lost their home and their business and say, oh, can I have $400? I just figured they were in the same boat as I was and the good Lord want, <clears throat> wanted us to do the best we could. So they're, so they're used to, they took good care of their clothes because they knew they were going to a secondhand store and it would give them credit to buy new clothes. Okay, there's our ring that's floral. And it's going to go right here. Now, if you don't like the plaid, you can flip it over and do the blue and do the plaid here. Oh, it even looks cute with plaid on both. Hmm. Now, maybe we should vote on that. The flower pot is going to hide this. <clears throat> and I, I think. Sometimes I, I glue it so well you can't even see the cut line. Now I really don't know which one I want to do. I was going to do the blue so it would match this one over here. Any suggestions? Thank you, Tony. Oh, someone asked if I glued down. No, I glued down on the easel. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I've decided since I don't have my pictures, is I'm going to glue all this and just have one whole piece that after I pick the picture, I will put the picture and then glue it all down. But yes, I glue down. But I glue down <clears throat> at the end. Uh, you'll see. I, I, I leave it like this in case I change my mind or want to do anything different with all my little pieces. Okay. I'm still thinking on this. Mm. I think I'm gonna go with the solid. Okay, the next item that I would do would be our Laurel Crescents. So here you get a choice. I really like this print here that we just cut. On the back is green. That would be cute because it has flowers on it in um, the laurel. But do you want to use all that cute print or do you think you'd want to do a border out of that later? That's a thought. Hmm. I'm going to grab a different green. Okay. <clears throat> I have this green that was on the back of some cute little title cards. I think this is even, might even be a uh, kiwi from years ago, maybe not. But it's a nice green, and it's the same green as in, in the paper. 
and a little laurel fruit on it. And the laurel will oh, it's tight. Squeeze it, Jenny. And the laurel will fit on it. So there's your choice. Get yourself a piece of green. Now this green has a, a slight um, pattern to it. Whether you can see that or not. Um, yeah, I think. And you could use just the solid green, whichever one you liked. Um, I'm going to do this one. Only because I want to be able to do. I'm, I'm, I'm thrifty. I try to say the cute print as much as possible. You could do even just a plain avocado. This is an avocado green is what I would call it. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to point out. I have used these, this laurel over and over. And um, you really have to be careful and hold it down snug when you're tracing because it wants to move around and then it's hard to line back up the leaves. So keep your hands on it at all times. Don't try to trace and not have your hand on it because <clears throat> it wiggles all over the place. Well, sounds like my period has finally settled down. Oh, I know why. Is it five o'clock? Yes. Okay, so my husband has fed him dinner. So she's got her face in the food bowl, and she is an eater. So my story on the parrot was I had a different parrot. We have two. We have a male called Jade, and he's a green Amazon. It's called a yellow nape Amazon. And then we had um, an African gray. And we lost our African gray hmm, uh, about seven weeks ago. She had a heart attack. She was only 10 years old. They're supposed to live to be 60 or so. But I didn't know that she had a heart issue. Now, when I trace this, I kind of ran out of paper. So I'm going to trim it down to make that leaf right shape. <clears throat> um, and our green parrot was so depressed. He missed his girl so bad. And he was really, really mad at me because the last time he saw, we called him brother and sister. The last time he saw his sister was I had her wrapped in a blanket taken to the emergency hospital. So he was really upset with me. So my husband and I decided we definitely had to find a replacement. But if you go to buy a young parrot, African gray, they're the best talkers in the world. Um, you're talking about four or $5,000. Looks uh, like a down payment on a car. So we started going online and we looked up the rescue places. And I had been following a rescue place in Michigan for about a year. I love the gal, Battle Creek, Michigan, I think is where she's located. Called Birds and Beak Rescue. Nice gal, Shannon. So I've been following her. So I told my husband, you know, there's got to be a rescue place. Now, here's how thrifty I am. There's a chunk of green right here. And I'm going to be careful to cut, not slice it, and save that chunk because that'll make a little leaf in a plant. Since I do so many of these little plants and little floral things, if you followed me, you know, and here, this piece here will be a nice piece to save. And I'll show you where I keep all those. For some of you, this is repeat, sorry. Others that are just joining me who haven't watched me before, you have to hear it again. So under my desk here, I have this tray. 
And I keep all my little scraps in here. These are not color coordinated at all. And if I have a card, a um, title card from Kiwi that I think I will never use, but I like the back side of it, then I put it in here and I save it because they make fabulous little flowers, little doodads. Here's another one, I think. Let's see. Yep, here's another one. My favorite books. That was from the storyteller uh, kit. But on the back is a really neat um, chevron looking print that would be good for something. So that's where I keep all those. And then if it's a big piece, I have this plastic tub and this one drops right inside of it and it has a lid. And when I go to crops, I just take it all with me. There's always someone that'll yell out, anybody got a piece of black paper? Anybody got something to make a yellow flower? I go, go see Jenny. So I have this big piece left also, but we're gonna keep that. Oh, I have some over here, so. Okay, oh, we're coming together here. Here's our laurel. Okay, now for the fence. The fence is homegrown five. If you don't have it, you don't have to worry about it. You could just put the wheelbarrow there without it. But it'd be very easy just to draw some strips like that and point them and one across and make your own little fence. It's gonna go over here. Whenever I see wood grain paper in any kit, I hang on to it. I pick it up, single sheets. I, I, I just love making things with the wood grain. This is a photo play. Yes, this is photo play. And it was autumn leaves. And I already did a layout with it, but I love the back side. So I'm gonna trace my picket fence on here, but I'm not gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it this way. Then my grain will be going the way that the wood would go. Now again, it would be easier, and it doesn't matter because it's right either way, of tracing it on the back because we'll be able to see the cut lines on this particular paper. Now, if you don't have any wood grain paper, this is what I would do. I'll go into my stash. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm gonna cut another one for you. Let me see if this piece is big enough. Oh, just a tad short. Has to be a light, here we go. Oh, that's too light. Has to be a light brown because I'm gonna show you how I do my shading. I'll go in the, now this box I do have by color. So I'm gonna to go to my brown section, maybe. Brown section. I do. Let's see what I can find in here. It doesn't have grain on it. Ooh, that would work. Okay, I'm gonna use this, um, I can never think what it's called. This, it's not cardstock. I know it has a name to it. It looks like a brown paper bag. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut two. I'm gonna cut one, show you how I make wood grain. If I don't have any wood grain.
and then I'm going to cut one out of wood grain. So you just pick out what you have. If you know you've got in your stash somewhere a piece of wood grain paper, go ahead and cut your fence out of wood grain. I love these paper mate pencils that you missed the line. That happens sometimes. Okay, so that one's done. And again, I want to have it go this way. So I want to go this way. See on the comments. Craft paper. Thank you, Linda. I knew you'd know. Linda knows everything. I've watched some of her videos. She's so smart. I can never think. I always say, you know, the paper bag paper, craft paper. And when you buy it, that's what it says on it. I bought it at Hobby Lobby. Thank you, Linda. Pencil marks are really showing up well on here. Did I get them all? Yeah. Okay, and I have a bowl right here. For this side, the paper, okay. <clears throat> so first, I'm going to cut out my fence. with wood grain. Just where I want it. If I'm not missing. I'll catch the beginning on the recorded copy. Okay, Vicki. Don't feel bad. I was late too. Oh, the time zones. I know you guys. The time zones are killing me. I'm trying to figure out if five o'clock my time, which makes it eight o'clock, in New York for the one gal is um, early enough because I'm sure if I go two hours, she ain't going to be staying up till 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock chatting with me and, and uh, scrapbooking. But it is nice that we can catch it later so you don't have to stay up. Um, I'm a nighttime uh, scrapbooker. I usually never amend this room. This is my craft room. Um, or crafting at this time of day. At eight o'clock, I come in with my parrot and she joins me for an hour before she goes to bed. They go to bed between eight and nine and they sleep till nine or 10. They like their quiet time and they're sleeping. We take them out of the big cages. We put them in these little sleeping cages. We say, night, night. She jumps on the stick and they, they're very happy to go. And we keep them in the laundry room, one on top of the washer and one on top of the dryer. And we cover them with a towel that keeps them warm because the back door is right there by the laundry room. Keeps them warm and keeps their dander down in their cage so that when we take them out and we take the newspaper out, we don't have dander all over the place. The problem with African grays is they don't have natural oil like the other um, parrots do. So they have a lot of dander. So if you have breathing problems, 
they're not the best brewed to own. Ta da! There you go. There's our little brown picket fence with the wood grain. Okay, now I'm going to cut the other one. I'll give you a quick, I'm not going to make the whole thing, but I'm going to show you how I do it. That'll give you a chance to cut up, uh, catch up if you're behind or to get out any of your other templates. Um, I use Tim Holtz <clears throat> inks by Ranger and I have it in all different colors. I have to cut the whole thing because I, I can't just show you how I do it on one side. It just won't work, I don't think. So I'm gonna quickly cut the whole thing. When the person asked me um, about gluing on my scrapping easel, the reason I use the scrapping easel is both my shoulders are very bad. Um, my knee was very bad and I kept falling years ago and every time I fall, I'd fall on my shoulder. I got my knee replaced and then I had to have shoulder surgery um, a few years ago. And then I've since fallen one other time on the other shoulder. So both my shoulders are bad. So if I sit and work like this, it really hurts my um, posture and my shoulders. So I have found the scrapping easel. Now I have the scrapping easel I'm using um, adjusted backwards. It's really supposed to be flipped up higher, but for me, that's too high of a lift with my arm. So I have it turned around and I have it down short so that it's easy for me to reach all the items. And this is how I work. Um, the scrap and easel is normally straight and I have over here a couple of racks with paper uh, where I keep my projects that are coming up or extra Kiwi Lane um, background paper and that type of thing. But the way I have this little table over here, when I started scrapping for the first seven or eight years, I scrapped on a TV tray. I didn't have a craft room or a designated spot. So I used it. I had my supplies on either arm of an overstuffed chair and a TV tray in front of me. And here's our other thick and fence. Okay. Let me get out my daubers. I have a little turntable here that spins. And I keep my ink stacked up on here. And I'm going to take walnut. Let me see what the comments say. Love that fence. How did I get started? Paula wants to know how I got started with Felix. That's a, a story that'll take some time. So I used to be a caregiver for elders. I did it for 15 years. And um, okay, so I'm taking, applying my ink and I'm gonna go around the inside first of my picket fence. Now, you don't do it lightly and you don't just go like that. You wanna get some ink on the craft paper and the more, Marrier. If you feel that it's not dark enough, um, I don't think um, vintage, what's it called? Vintage photo. Vintage photo is going to be dark enough. That's why I picked a darker one. Anyhow, I was a caregiver for many, many years. And one of my last clients, his name was Les, he was blind. He'd been blind for seven years. And he lost his eyesight to gl glaucoma, I think. And um, he had a parrot. 
and there its name was Jade. And when I went to interview for the job and I got to meet Les, I saw the parrot was there and I told the head caregiver that was interviewing me, oh my gosh, I get to take care of a nice, sweet, elderly man, get paid for it and play with a parrot? M maybe I should pay you. And she said, what? I said, oh, my ex-husband. Okay, now I take the ink. I'm talking, see, and just going forward. And I get the ink on the side of the dauber. And I'm going to go like so, the way that the wood can would go. And if it makes dark lines, even better. You'll see after I get done, it's going to have some lines in it. The way the wood grain would go. Now we've got craft paper that has been distressed all over it with ink. Let me see if this pen writes. I'm not sure. I've got some. Perfect. This is a um, jelly roll pen, a fine. You could use a medium too. Um, now I'm going to do it. And you're going to think I'm crazy, but you just squibble with your pen. If you want a knot hole, make a knot hole. Okay. So it looks like that. Where's the wood grain one that I put? Oh, it's over here. Now, the wood grain paper definitely is wood grain. But here is my other one. Now, I have this roller pen that I buy at Rollerball at the dollar store. I told you I'm very thrifty. And I would outline this picket fence and I would use black around it. I'll show you that when we get to it. On this one, I'm just gonna do a little to show you. Now remember, you're only gonna go, the board goes here. And then this board goes this way. So there's my picket fence. I should do this here. And it would look cute on there. And this one would look cute on there. So either of them would work. Um, so you, if you if you cut your own, that's how I make wood grain, just like so. <clears throat> if you wanted to get fancy, and you have them later on, you can dig them out, and you can take a brad, a little tiny brad. In black or brown. I don't know if I have one in here or not. Purple. I'd have to get out my brad container. But what I was going to say is you'd poke a hole right there and put your little brad there and it would look like a nail. So you would put one on each. <clears throat> if you're not into brads and you don't have them, then you can do the same thing by taking your little pin and drawing yourself a nail head. But if you like three dimensional, then you could put a brad. You could draw it and if you found your brads later, that's what you would do. So let me show you what I was gonna do on this one. Thank you, Paula. Okay, so we're talking about parrots. So 
I interviewed for the job and I told the lady, I don't really need this job. I really don't need the money. I have retirement. I have an antique store and I'm doing fine. Um, I was already retired uh, at that time. And I said, if there's someone else who's qualified for the job, who needs the money, please hire them. Because uh, as much as I'd like to take care of Bliss, it's not a necessity. So I talked myself out of a job. They hired the other gal. <laughs> I thought about that parrot, and I thought about that parrot. I thought, gee, what did I do that for? Now I'm taking black, and I'm going around the outside. Let me see if it even shows. Yes, it does, a little bit of the wood grain paper. Um, so about a week or two later, I was in J.C. Penney's, and the gal that interviewed me was from Georgia, Georgia or Alabama, Alabama, and she had, uh, the reason I said Georgia is a lady that was a manager here at our mobile home park, she was from Georgia and she had a cute accent too. And she had the cutest accent. The whole time she was interviewing me, she had that twang. So I'm in J.C. Penney's. I have my arms loaded up. Now I'm taking the black rollerball pen. And I'm going around the outside of the fence. This is why my layouts take a while. Because I'm anal and I have to have my detail. I cannot do plain. Oh, by the way, Deborah Johnson. That layout that you just put up with the strawberry baskets, I am so impressed. It is so darn cute. If you gals haven't seen it, you need to check it out. It is so cute. I, I'm surprised you still had paper left from that set. I thought you did a class with me and another class. I love the way you did. Oh, it's so cute. I just saw it before I went went online uh, on air anyhow i hear this voice from across the room at jc penny's jenny and i'm thinking who is that now when she interviewed me she had her hair down and this night she had her hair up pulled back in a bun jenny and i'm thinking what so i look up and there's this lady standing there how are you, honey? I said, I'm fine. She goes, you don't remember me. I go, uh, no. She said, I'm Ruby. I said, Ruby, hi. She said, you know, I've been thinking about you for two weeks. Every night when I go to bed, I think of you. I'm thinking, really? She said, your interview, when you told me to hire someone else, I just couldn't believe it. And you wanted to hang out with with Jade, that parrot that Les has. And you walked away from that, even though you said you'd do it for free just to be able to be with the parrot. And I said, and the good Lord told me, you need to contact that gal. And I was going to call you, but here you are right in front of me. She said, honey, would you consider coming to work for us as an alternate? You might not get to work that much, but... The days you do work, you sure would entertain um, Jade because Les can't see him anymore, so we can't have him on his hand. And he forgets that he's there, so, it, so he doesn't talk as much. Okay, there's my outline around there. And uh, I never know if I'm in front of the camera or not. I think so. There's my outline. There's my little uh, nails I put on it. Oh, there we go. Oh, not bad. I got it in front of there. And then the other one. So they're pretty good. They're pretty close. Um, and I said, sure. She said, I'll give you a call because you have to, we'll pay you for two days to come and train and learn how to do the job. This job is so funny. Every nook and cranny, everything you did, there was a post-it, a note on the wall. Because you had to put his toothbrush to the right six inches up. 
you had to put, he was so well trained, this Les, of how to take care of himself, that if you put the things in the right place, he could brush his own teeth, he could make it to the bathroom. They had um, PVC pipe and a rope running from one end, one end of the house to the other so he could follow the rope and get himself to bed at night and make it to the bathroom in the middle of the night. So um, she, she hired me part-time and trained me for two days. And two days after she trained me, she called me and said, can you come to work? It was six o'clock in the morning. Be here at eight o'clock? I said, wait a minute, I thought I was alternate. Oh, I already have someone that was sick. So the first week I worked, uh, I worked a whole week because someone was sick. We're gonna tuck the little hat behind there. And I have some special paper. What did I do with the paper today? Put the wood grain over there. I tried to be organized and have my paper out. Okay, here's another one of those. Jenny hangs on to all her paper, even little pieces. This is very thin paper. It's not double-sided. I found it years ago on sale, like for 10 cents a sheet, and I bought it all. Now, that burned up in the fire. I had about 50 sheets. But I had a lot of people donate old paper to me. And lo and behold, someone had the same paper and donated me several sheets. So it's a woven uh, looking makes great Easter baskets, make cute picnic baskets. Um, I'm gonna make the hat, a straw hat out of it. Now, you can do the same thing that I just showed you by picking a paper. I found this one that was a kiwi paper. Um, it's blue on one side, gold on the other. I can tell you what kid it came from because it's a leftover, but you could do the same thing by cutting it like so. So I think I'll show you, I'll make one out of each and we'll see which one I like the best. You can also do it with a plain golden piece of, or tan. Uh, tan might not show up as well on the, um, You know, I might do a Linda on this, Linda. This shows that it has a, a band, but I might tie a piece of ribbon around it. You would do that, or a piece of twine, I know you would. So I'm gonna trace it on here, and then I'm gonna trace it on here. How's this working out? Can you see all the stuff I'm doing? Because this is about the fourth video well, I made videos before, the fourth live. And, um, oh, that's going to be cute. And I've tried the angle from different, there's not very many places I can use the clamp that I bought to hang my um, bone and to get my scrap and easel in. So I think this is working pretty well. You can see. The first time I had it set up, you couldn't see my work that I was doing, I was blocking it. But this time I think I've got it pretty good. Okay, there's that straw hat. And I think I'm gonna like the other one better. I don't know. Let me get a, another um, magnet. I keep the magnets over here in a little metal tin. So I can throw them like that when they land right in there every time. So our fence is going to go here. And our hat, I was going to tuck. I got this idea from Susan. I think she did it on hers like so. So I'm going to do that one. I can't save any of this. Let's cut this one and see if I like this one too. Linda probably knows even what paper this is. Every time I can't, I see someone post something about which paper or which template came in, what kit, man, she's Johnny on the spot with the answer. She has a steel trap mine. 
memory. Oh, that makes a cute little hat. Cute, 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 cute. Now I don't know. I might like this other one better. I may save my straw hat for another time. Oh yeah, that's cute. Get under there. I like that one. So, oh, you're just one hour ahead of mountain time. Oh, okay. Paula says she does the same thing with, hi, Jenny, what time did you start? Uh, I started at five o'clock my time. Oh, see, I told you, Linda already has a comment. You could use the ribbon template from the tiny egg hunt. Oh, hi, Shirley. I see Shirley all the time on. Um... Oh, thank you, Deborah. Deborah says she likes the idea of me showing pattern paper and um, regular paper. Uh, I make do with what I have. If I don't have it, I make my own pattern paper. Okay, so if you did just a plain yellow, you could uh, ink it really good with a brown shade <coughs> and a gold shade. So I'm gonna ink this one. Uh, I'm gonna use, not the one, I'm gonna use a vintage photo. I have my, my daubers by color and I have them on um, memorizer which one is which because the browns all look alike. Let's see how this turns out. And I'm gonna go pull the template that Linda just mentioned. I'm gonna trim this up, I kinda cut off the end of my hat here. Didn't do it very round. Okay, egg hunt. I have all my templates in um, <coughs> the Tiffany boxes. <coughs> and I have four of them on the top. Two for accessories and two for um, borders. And they're alphabetized. And then within the alphabetization, I sometimes have them by theme. So with Christmas, I have snowmen, um, gingerbread, tiny traditions, tiny holidays, and tiny seasons. Instead of having those alphabetized, I put them right by the Christmas um, title. And I have them like so. Oh, and I have the re reindeer and sled there too. And I've labeled them with a diamond labeler. So <clears throat> because I have those there, <clears throat> so Christmas goes by critters, but E for egg hunt comes up because it's by Enchanted. And um, when I have peace, with the Christmas one too. <clears throat> so let's see what she's talking about. Oh, I see what she's talking about. The little um template. I think it might be too big. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. Let's try it. That's what's fun. Um, what color should we do? 
I was going to use a red band, but I don't think I want a red bow. <coughs> Get out my handy dandy colors here. Turn out a little pink and see what it looks like. It kind of fights the. Hey, that'll work. There you go. There's another example. I bet you that's the back of the Kiwi card. Yep, it is. <coughs> it's a little plaid, little check, apricot color, almost the same color as the background paper. And it was the back of a kiwi. Let's try it, Linda. For some, it may be not worth their while because it's awful small <clears throat> to cut out, but we're going to give it a shot. And I'm also going to get out some ribbon. I have tons of ribbon. I like three dimensional. As you can tell by looking at my layouts, I pop everything up. I do a lot of paper piecing. So I took care of Les, back to my story, took care of Les for five years, played with the parrot for five years. Half the girls that worked there, there were six of us, we took days and turns and shifts as Les got sicker uh, and less able to take care of himself. Um, and of the six, there was only two of us that liked the parrot. Half of them were scared to death of them. And let me tell you, they're just like dogs. They scent when you don't like them, and they work you. They, they intentionally nip at you to see you jump a mile. Um, and I didn't let him get away with anything. Matter of fact, he started talking and saying things. Every day, Les went to a different place. We took him to a different place for lunch. Where we lived, all the churches took turns five days a week of fixing a hot lunch for the seniors. So Monday it was the Catholics, Tuesday was the Protestants, Wednesday was the Methodists, the senior center had one, <clears throat> and so on and so forth. So um, I'm getting out wild honey. It's a color ink. And I'm going to ink around the bow and see how it looks. Um, and so when we would leave, I'd say, bye, Jade. See you later. We'll be back. And he's in there talking now. I can hear him. And he'd say, bye. See you later. And Les would get the biggest kick out of it. When we come back, we'd say, honey, I'm home. And the bird would say, honey, I'm home. And Les would say, how do you teach him all those things? I said, you, every day you just say the same thing. And pretty soon, he's saying it. So these are gel glitter pens <clears throat> made by Paper, Source, Paper Studio, Hobby Lobby, $6.99. I give them when they have their sale at 50% off. I'm on my third set. I'm addicted to them. I got Deborah Johnson addicted to them, and I don't know anybody else, but they do a fabulous job. They jazz it up. So let's see what our bow looks like. <clears throat> it should have a little. Tie. Um, I think that's not it. Hmm. Maybe that's it. But I would put that on later. I don't want to take up all your time. Oh, that's pretty doggone cute. You know what? Where is that template? Okay, Linda, you were right. I'm going to do the ribbon. <clears throat> so, Jade and I became friends, <clears throat> and the year before Les passed, 
He was 96 years old. He asked the head caregiver to contact me and see if I would rehome Jane. And that's what we did. Um, going back to my story of Chrissy, we went to the rescue place and there was a lady who had passed away and her family had no interest at all of taking her parrot that she'd had for 20 years. So that poor parrot had to go to a rescue. And here was Vic and I just crying our eyes out because we lost our parrot. And Jade was mad at me because he lost his sister. So we contacted <clears throat> the rescue. I'm gonna, hmm. I'm gonna do it like that. I'm gonna put it to the side. Um, let me show you what I'm doing here. I told you I'm anal, so bear with me. The other thing that I didn't do, that I'm gonna do. <clears throat> Again, this is why it takes me so long because I, as my mother used to say, fiddle fart around. I, um, I look at it and I go, oh, that's cute, but it could be cuter. So I'm taking a brown from another, a light brown. Um, the glitter pins from Hobby Lobby do not come with a brown. Oh, there was a gold I could have used too, or the orange, but I'm just taking this light brown that I have. I need to find a new one. Um, so <clears throat> Ruby called me and said, Les feels that his days are numbered. Um, okay, now you get to see me glue. For those of you who've seen this before, it's a repeat. I do not use rollers, um, or what you call them, um, adhesive. <clears throat> Any kind of adhesive, I use all glue. It's called glue basted. You can get it at the nice quilt shops. It's a quilting, temporary basting glue, and you can get it on Amazon. It comes in a bottle like this. I get a little squeeze bottle. That comes with a little lid. Squeeze bottle is also, it's called uh, Precision Tip. And it has this little thing on it that gets in the way, so I cut it off. It's also available in Amazon. And I saw them the other day at Hobby Lobby. So you can get them there. <clears throat> and I fill up the bottle. I do so much scrapbooking because um, I'm trying to replace the 320 albums that I had um, completed over the years. And then the fire took it. So I work every night trying to get my grandkids pictures all done. And my husband counted the other day, I have 24 done. Okay, so I didn't like the way that the, um, the band was not the full size. So you either cut it full size to fit all the way across the hat. You can center it, it, but I'm putting it to the side like so, because I'm gonna put my little ribbon to the side that Linda suggested we make. And I'm gonna do as I always do, pop dot it up. The reason I got into using the glue, um, it's a water-based glue that quilters use to hold two pieces of paper material together while they stitch and they uh, use the long iron uh, arm to quilt. And um, then when they wash the quilt, the glue dissolves. But it's um, acid-free, so it can be used on pictures and everything. I even saved this tiny little piece here. Um, <clears throat> now, you've heard me say, I just can't stop. <coughs> <coughs> Dog on allergies. Oh. I just bought these, just bought them. The other day, Deborah and I were talking to each other. Um, she's, um, out of Seattle on an island. And 
I, she said, I'm in Hobby Lobby and where do I find such and such? Um, I had showed her a picture of these cute little carrots that were made out of felt that were flat and felt adhesive. And I thought they would be cute. And they were $2.99 at Hobby Lobby. So she wanted to know where I found them. But <clears throat> all the um, paper studio stuff was on sale, 50% off. And I saw these cute little blings. You're just gonna have enough bling, especially when you're trying to restock. <clears throat> so I'll take my piercing tool, as I call it, <clears throat> and lift one up and put it on my little hat. Oh, so cute! I get so excited. There's our little bonnet with the bow and the bling on our fence, hanging around. <clears throat> I just happened to buy these and had them. You could put anything there or you could just cut a little circle. Oh, the other thing I could have done is I have this little hole punch that I always have right here. If I did another one, I don't want to cut that. I'll cut it over here. See if that would have worked. That would have been perfect too. I could have just punched a little hole, a little circle, and put it on there in another color. <clears throat> now, this paper is flimsy. When I um, do something like this and it's flimsy, and if I want to pop it up and make it so it won't bend and stuff, I'll put it down on a just piece of white cardstock and back it glue it down and cut around it again so it's sturdy so that um, we can tie a ribbon around it. Let me see what I have over here. <clears throat> Excuse me just a minute. I'm telling you the people, the scrapbookers were so, so, so generous after I lost my home. They came and they gave me all this extra goodies. See, I'm not going to take the time, but I would mount this, cut a piece like that, and then take like this and tie a little knot and put ribbon around it if you were a ribbon person. But you can't do it on this flimsy. Um, I don't think I need to take the time to do that. I think you can figure that out. Oh, that one's too small. But that's another way that you can do it. But I love this idea that she had. Might as well use our Kiwi um, templates if we have them. And thank you, Deborah, for leading us into temptation using all our, let me put this away. I just threw that over into a bowl that I have over there since we're not gonna be using it again. Okay, so do we have any questions? Bow bling, beautiful. Thank you, Linda Hansen. Yes, I know. Oh, someone asked about the, they're just called glitter gel pins. And they're the uh, Hobby Lobby brand, Paper Studio is what it's called. And they have two different ones. One is, let me see if I have the other. One's called metallic gel pins. And the other one is called glitter gel pins. The metallic, I bought two. I'm not as enamored with them. Um, they, oh, they coat on so smooth and they dry instantly either of them. Um, I use them all the time. Um, so they don't really have a brand name except for Paper Studio. And they're hanging by in the aisle that they have their inks right by the Tim Holtz inks and, the, um, and their ink pads and stuff like that. You just look for them and get them when they have their half off because then you only pay um, $3.50. I went and they were all out this last time. I always keep an extra one in the drawer because you never know. So let's see what other questions we have. Ooh, 
what kind of gel pins are you using? I just answered that, the bonnet wing. Oh yes, Linda. Really, yes, it does, it does add. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Sharon McDonald says, it's so stinking cute. It did turn out cute, huh? Okay, let's go on to the wheelbarrow. <clears throat> now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time except on the Laurel um, Crescent um, of inking and all the stuff. I mean, I think most of you have know how to glue that down and glue that down. Um, what I picked out for this was in the kit and it says, a garden is a friend you can visit anytime. And I have a hard time using their title cards because I don't like them just square. Um, but I held this up to the light and I'm pretty sure that if I'm careful, I can put this on the wheelbarrow. Now, the wheelbarrow could be done many different ways. I don't know whether you want me to take the time to do it, but you can do it <clears throat> with the craft paper again and use the inks and the pens and do your wood grain. I'm going to, I hear you. She's whistling at or chipping at me. I'm going to trace it over this title, and hopefully I hit it right. So this is going to be an extra step. That's the loudest she gets. That's her every night when I put her to bed for some reason. Oh, I did good. Hmm. Surprise, surprise. Okay. So I trace that, and that's gonna go on there afterwards. Now, this is how I start layering. This red was gonna be for the hat, but don't need that now, because I'm not doing that. This is our silver. This is a brown, oh, <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know if Kiwi appreciates me using all their time. I hope there are days where you fall in love with being alive. I bought two sets of this kit, so I have two of everything of the card. And I <clears throat> didn't think I needed to. I could use this and cut out things out of it. But I like the brown. It's got, again, like the green, kind of a distressed look to it. So I am going <clears> to... <throat> Let's see. Again, I'm going to trace on the back. I'm going to trace the whole wheelbarrow. And I'm going to show you how I layer. Because instead of cutting out little pieces and having a hard time um, gluing them and making them sit, I learned this years ago. Uh, back to the bird. Sorry, this is taking, I told you it was a long story. Um, so the head caregiver called me up and said, Les would like to know if you'd like Jane. I go, like now? He says, well, he knows he doesn't have much longer and he'd like Jade to be acclimated and you to be acclimated. So yes, whenever you would want it. I said, like soon? Yes, like real soon. So. I got off the phone and my husband said, who was that? And I told him, he said, yeah, let's do it. I said, Vic, you don't understand. You've never had a bird. They're like adopting a two-year-old. They never grow up. They're messy. They're time consuming. They're very affectionate, but they take a lot of attention and they can be destructive. You have to keep them occupied they can tend to pluck their feathers if you leave them alone. Now, our birds travel everywhere. Our birds have been to Arizona. They've been to New Mexico. They've been to Idaho. When we go for a long vacation, they go for a long vacation. The only one we didn't take them to, we went to Hawaii. We boarded them. But they are easy to board. It's just kind of expensive. So, again, I traced on the back of the card because it was light, much easier on my eyes. So, now I have a whole round wheelbarrow okay <clears throat> and I'm going to take my put my ink away that one 
I'm usually really good about putting the inks where they belong. Except I can't seem to find the wall. There it is, the walnut stain. I'm going to use brown espresso this time. I ink around everything. The reason being is I don't like the white showing from the white core of the pieces you cut out. And so I like them to look less cut out, more like they were for professionally cut rather than fussy cut it by a little old lady. That's just my feelings, but it's not necessary. But how much time did that take? Zip, done. <clears throat> okay, so we've got a brown wheelbarrow. We've got a sign that's gonna hang on the side of it. Guess what? I'm saving this. It goes in my little stash. Now, I haven't decided if I'm doing this square or rounded. So I'm going to start with rounded and see what I think, just like the template is rounded. <clears throat> this little piece, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to throw that away. OK. Yes, that goes there. Oh, yeah. OK, I'm leaving it rounded. I'm coming off my trace line. I'm going to ink it in brown. You could, I could get out blue, but I've got the brown here. And you probably most of you might not have different colors. You'll hear me call them chalks, because years ago I used to use chalks. But now we use inks. <clears throat> Okay. Not necessary to do this. Like I said, you could just use the wood grain, make a wood grain one. But I got the title and I thought it was cute. Very little glue. That bottle of glue will last you a year. It's about 11, well, who knows anymore with everything going up so much. It's about $11 a bottle. Okay, is this going to cover this? Let me see. Yes, yes, and yes. Oh. Hmm. Okay, Linda. I think I told you I watched you and you had a <clears throat> you had a um I can't even think of what it's called. See, this is getting old. Exacto knife that you suggested <clears throat> that I said I broke the first week <clears throat> and I replaced it with EK tools and I bought it at the scrapbook store and I love it. And it comes with six blades that you can change out. So, Linda, I'm calling upon you. I'm going to make a silver metallic, I'm not because I want to show my metallic pin. Uh, <clears throat> wheel. So do we have to cut out in between the spokes? And if so, uh, the way I did it with leaving. Oh, yeah, I guess I have to. Kind of answered my own question as I was um, doing this. Whoops, I didn't trace it all. Sorry. I missed one. <clears throat> I was going to say we should cut off the brown. I'm going to freehand the rest of the wheel here. Uh, <clears throat> I was going to leave that and, and glue the... Um, 
or a silver metal wheel that I'm making on the brown, but then the brown would show through the spokes. So I guess I'm gonna have to cut it off. I just thought it would be easier to be able to attach it. That's why I did the whole wheelbarrow, but. There's never a mistake, just the opportunity to be creative. <clears throat> you could leave the silver if you wanted to and um, but there's enough hanging over here that I can attach it. I'm going to do it this way. And show you how I would do it. <clears throat> and if not, just take a pin and um, I never even worked with an exacto knife. I worked with scissors and I would try to cut this out with the scissors. And then I watched Linda or Mary, Mary Snyder, I think it was Linda's video and went, oh, gee, see, we learn from each other. We really do. That's why Kiwi does this. They want us to pass on all this information I've been doing paper piecing. Uh, well, I used to make paper bag scrapbooks and sell them on eBay for 10 years. I made over 5,000 paper bag scrapbooks. And I did tiny little pieces and ribbons and bows and they were all finished. It's when. Hannah Montana and SpongeBob and uh, High School Musical during that time frame. My daughter would call me up and say, Mom, here's a new fad. Go out and buy some stickers and come up with a design. And I sold them for $14.99 and they would bid up and I had sold some that sold for $50, $60. I don't know why the hell anybody would buy a paper bag scrapbook for $50. But I never questioned it. Everybody to their own thing. Then I sold borders and uh, titles and stuff made on my Cricut. Now I can get my scissors in and clean it up. Kind of put that one up there. Okay. Now, some of you may not want to do this part. You could be working still on your fence or your hat. That's fine. You can um, just take a pen and draw in the spokes and not cut them out. Um, you, you see my work and you make comments on it and now you'll appreciate how much time I spend um, some nights I, last night I whipped out two layouts. All the pieces were all done. I buy some uh, things on eBay all compl completed because I don't want to, I'm kind of limited on time trying to redo these scrapbooks while my grandkids are still kids, not grown adults and married. Um, I don't know if I'll be around then, but um, it's kind of fun because the old scrapbooks, you know, were done with the, the scissors and all the stuff. So some of them I didn't mind losing. So they're all done. Almost all of them are done with Kiwi borders because I've been selling Kiwi Lane since they started back in 2016. Okay, now it's okay if you have some rough edges. This is an old metal wheel on an old wheelbarrow. It's seen better days. So let's leave it at that. So I'm gonna take black. I also have a hickory smoke, but I think the black will show up better. <clears throat> so my husband talked me into going ahead and getting the parrot and we brought him home. It took him time to adjust. 
And once a week on one of the days that I worked, I would pack him up and I'd take him with me to see Les. The day that we took him, even though Les knew where Jane was going, it was so sweet. He cried like a baby and he told him, Jane, you be a good boy for her now. Daddy's giving you up and I don't want to do it, but I don't want someone that isn't going to appreciate you taking you um, when I'm gone. And none of my family want you. So I know that you'll get a good home. And he bawled and he bawled and he bawled. I felt so bad. But I bring him over to visit. And um, I'm going to quit playing around with that. And now, it just looks like a gray wheel, right? Well, not really. Because I have my other little fancy dancy pin. This is glitter gloss. It's aqua shimmer. It's made by Nouveau. Um, glitter gloss is a color. It's number 882. You can buy it at a scrapbook store. Um, I bought them at Joann's. They call it a pen, but it's really a brush. And it looks like a brush. And you shake it like I did. And you squeeze it. Now, when you squeeze it, squeeze it over a piece of paper and squeeze lightly because a whole bunch will come out. and You don't need a whole bunch. So if a whole bunch comes out, then just use it and, um, you know, go over and use it and don't squeeze more. But I didn't even squeeze. Now I have a shiny metallic wheel. I also have this other one made by Nouveau, I think. Let me see what it says. Made in Japan. Oh, this is Winkastella. This is a different brand, but it works the same if you find that one. And this one is uh, silver. So I could have done it silver, but it doesn't glimmer as much as this one. Oops, I just threw my little pieces. Let me stand up a minute. Get my... Another handy dandy. How are we doing for time? I have no idea what time it is. My clock's up there. Have I really been doing it that long? I've been doing it an hour and a half. What time is it? Oh, seven. Wow. Okay. This was given to me. I told you people really came up to bat for me. This is made by Options, Creative Options, and it looks like a little purse. It's got a little handle and it has a little closure and it opens up and it has these little compartments in it with all kinds of stuff you can store in it. And I'm gonna see if I can find me a little brad that I like. found a black one. The shank on it's way too long, but I know how to. And anyhow, I carry that with me to my crops. If any of you are located in California, I'm going to start oh, I'll leave that on the floor. Uh, doing crops with Lindsay Smith. Lindsay is one of the original found um, grandfathered in uh, founding fathers of Kiwi Lane. She'd been with them forever. And her and I are partnering and she does crops now. And she's moved back to Idaho from California and the crops are in California at a scrapbook store. So I did the last one for her and we've been talking and I think we're gonna go partnership. And she'll do the back office and the collecting of the money and the advertising, the marketing and the so on and so forth. And I'll do the hands-on running it three-day crops. And we have one coming up in September. So um, there's hotels and restaurants and everything close by. So I used my um, piercing tool again and pierced it, poked a hole in it. I took a pair of um, wire cutters, shank cutters work too, and cut off half the brad because it was way too long and 
didn't need that. Well, you can hear my little parrot in there. Anyhow, we adopted Jay and we've had him since 2012, 10 years. So I brought him home. Now remember, he was owned by a man. Oh, I need to cut that because this is a big rat. He was owned by a man, even though he took to me and a couple of the other caregivers. And parents, once they become attached to one sex, usually that's their thing. So he liked me because he knew I paid attention to him and I talked to him and he loved me until he got to know my husband. And then one day he said, fooey on you, I don't like you anymore. And he bit me and I said, you little devil you. And after that, he was nasty to me and he has been ever since. But he loves my husband. So we adopted him. I'm having a hard time separating this. I should have done it first. I'll take it off and do it. Um, we adopted him in May. And by December, every time I looked at him, I cried. I said, Dad, I give you a good home. I buy you the good food. I love you. And what do you do? You don't even like your mommy anymore. And I think my husband got tired of me whining. And he surprised me and went online and he found an African gray baby parrot, six months old, um, that some gentleman had bought, not knowing anything about parrots, how much time they take and all that, and found out he was allergic to it. So his girlfriend said, it's me or the parrot. So he was advertising it on Craigslist. He just put it up at seven o'clock in the morning. And my husband said, Jenny, I'm buying you another parrot because you're driving me crazy because you and Jay can't get along. Well, look at that. You know what? I wonder if I could stick that. Now, you may not like your stuff to stick up quite this much in your um, pages. It doesn't bother me. I still get 25. If this wasn't such a thick shaft on the brad, I think I could stick it right in there, but I don't wanna block any of the words. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just glue it. This glue will glue anything, by the way. It's supposed to be for material, but it will hold this down. I'll have to let it sit and because it's gotta go right on the edge there for a while. But it's just good enough. Yep. I'm going to turn it so the whole brad is on there. Oops, sorry. A mess. I want the U to show. I think that's good. Okay, there's our little wheelbarrow. I'm going to let it sit. So I've got wood handle, wood. Um, if you wanted to get really fancy, you could take a piece of that gray and make metal here, because this would be metal. But I'm going to leave it wood. Yep, and I'm gonna let that dry, kind of like my liquid pearls, it's gonna set. <clears throat> so we got our fence, our wheelbarrow, and our hat. That goes on that side, our pictures. Okay, I think we're ready for the other side. So I'm gonna show you how I do the crescent laurel. Let me put this away. I try to keep my inks. Oh, by the way, um, your inks, I don't know whether you know this, but as you buy them, um, if you take the lid off and you set it down and then you have the container over here and you can't figure out who went to what, if you look on the bottom, it says um, ground espresso and the lid says ground espresso. I didn't know that for a whole year. I'd get them all mixed up. This is black soot and this is black soot. That away. And the black away. <clears throat> so let's talk about making our greenery look like greenery. And I can put this over here. We're done with our fence. That's so we don't lose and misplace. Because I can't tell you how many times a little template has slipped underneath the piece of paper. And I drop them and my cleaning lady finds them and puts them up on the table. But um, 
I found one the other day. It fell in my scratch paper and I was looking for a particular color. And, oh, lo and behold, it popped up. And oh, I didn't even know I lost this. And it was one of the tiny plants. Um, so where would you put this fence if you made two fences? And this was the extra. Where would you have it that you remember you had it? I'll tell you what I would do. I'd put it in with the template and I'd store it in there. So the first time I wanted to make a fence, I'd pull out that template and go, oh, oh, look, I forgot I made this one. Oh, clever. I don't have to make it now. If you put it in with a kit or you put it somewhere else, you'll never remember, at least not me. I have these spinners that have plastic bags with embellishments and little flowers and different things. Um, and that's how I store all my title cards for Kiwi. I was keeping them in the kits and then I would be doing a different layout that I needed a title for and I could never remember what kit had what titles. So I started taking them out of the kits right away and putting them in these plastic envelopes that I get some of my embellishments in like this. <clears throat> and I put a piece of masking tape that says love or family or garden or whatever. And then as I finished up the kit and I had no paper, I put them in there. If I was doing a garden layout, I could go. And even if I wasn't using Kiwi paper, I could find, put my hands on it. So you could, I could put this with title cards that said garden or <clears throat> nature, but I'm gonna file it with the template and then I'll be able to find it. So getting back to the, um, let me get my greens out. Oops, watch out Jenny, you're starting to accumulate stuff here. Put that away. Put the silver paste away. And <clears throat> I have these little rolls of old adhesive and I'm down to the last part of it. I keep them right here and the little lid that's so easy to lose that goes on my ink, I keep right in there. And the glue bottle, I keep right there. Um, you probably just heard my phone ringing. And I keep this here so that my glue bottle doesn't roll down on the floor and I can't find it. So I make use of, of those. So I'm gonna get out my green. <clears throat> so Daisy was only 10 years old and Jade is 48 years old. We got Jade when he's in his late 30s and we've had him 10 years. And he's a beautiful specimen. I'm using a darker green than the green that I cut the laurel out of. And I'm gonna ink it. And it's just enough. It's called a uh, rustic wilderness. It's just enough contrast that it shows. And I'm telling you the same thing as I did my fence. Get it all over it, it's okay. It'll even cover up your pencil marks so you don't have to erase because we're going to shade that green right into it. You could use black or dark brown. Um, I don't know that the vintage photo, that's why I stopped just using one color because I was never happy with not being able to shade my colors. See how I'm getting it all over the place? That's what I want to do. Wash this right off your hands. No problem. Now I'm doing another, um, <clears throat> another class next Wednesday. I have a very, very, very dear friend. We've been friends for 50 years. Okay, 
Remember I showed you with the fence, I put it on the side. I think it was the fence, yeah, to make the, I'm gonna get the ink on the side and I'm gonna drag like this on the leaves. Uh, and it'll highlight the center of the leaf. So we've been friends. Our, our daughters um, were in preschool together in Fremont, and then she moved to Southern California because her husband took a job. And then I got divorced. And then when I was divorced, her husband would send me money so I could come down and bring my kids for vacation down there. That's what I create, just with some colored inks. Then, and Deborah has heard me mention this before, there's a, an ink pen in the set called, they don't have names. It's not called anything. It's supposed to be black, but it's kind of a charcoal gray, but I call it non-black, I think I called it before that non-black color. And when you put it on green, it kind of soaks in and it, and it kind of looks, takes, um, how do I describe it? It takes on the color of whatever the paper is. It doesn't stay black, black. I guess that's what I'm saying. So if it's green, it kind of looks green. And if it's brown, it kind of turns brown. Um, so I'm going around the leaves with a pen. You could use just a plain black pen if that's what you have. And I don't do it fancy. It's okay if you go a little crooked because you're just highlighting the leaves. Um, anyhow, Judy has been sick. She's 83 years old. She's been sick off and on. Um, she had a, a pig valve replacement 20 years ago, and then 10 years ago, she had to have it replaced because it was getting old. And I went down to take care of her afterwards, and the replacement went perfect, but her lungs gave out. So um, I ended up spending three months down there with her. I am married. Um, I did go down the first time for 14 days which was supposed to be four days. Um, and then I came home for a week and then went down for 21 days and then came home. My husband's very self-sufficient and he knows how important uh, Judy and Don, that was her husband's name. She's a widower now. Don had um, emphysema. He never smoked. Um, never had any breathing problems. And then later in life, he got emphysema and they said it was a genetic emphysema that someone in his family had probably passed the gene on to him. And so he was on oxygen the last 10 years of his life. And my husband, this is our second marriage, got to know Don, but he only knew Don as sick Don but then Don had a lung transplant and for two years, Don was healthy. There's something about a lung transplant. If females get it, they last for years and years and years. If males get it, the average is two to three years. So Don opted to go ahead and do it anyhow so that he could have a, <clears throat> a good life for a few years. So he did get to go and hang with us healthy for couple of years. He was supposed to walk me down the aisle when I married my husband, but he got sick and and um and passed. And so I had to have a substitute. Um, so here's what it looks like when I get done. It looks like it's been printed or whatever you want to call it, but it's got three-dimensional, it's outlined, it glitters a little, the leaves stand out, and there's now, the same thing, I, I do grass with the garden frills, I think it's called. You have to help me out. What's that one called, that border I use all the time? The vine, oh my God, the vine turns out beautiful. 
see how it is. Garden frills. I know what's happening. My phone is closing. Put that plug in. Oh, I don't have a plug in. Do I? Yes. What happened? Oh, I'm there. Hmm. It was beeping. I thought I had lost you guys, but you're there. At least I think you're there. Am I there? You lost the picture, I know. But it's back, isn't it? Yeah, it went beep, 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 beep. And I don't know what happened. Maybe someone was trying to call me on my phone or something. Okay. So it was called Garden Frills. And I cut that one short and I make um, grass out of it and ground stuff. So anyhow, Judy, somehow her lungs have started giving, giving out on her. And she said, who would have thought that I would have lost my husband to a lung problem? And now I have a lung problem after going and having um, an artificial um, heart valve put in, pig valve. So I got a call yesterday and she's in the hospital. She put herself in the hospital and I always go down and take care of her. And her daughter's down there now till Monday. So what I'm trying to say is I may have to cancel on Wednesday. I am going to take everything with me because I've got it all prepared for the class I'm teaching. And I'm teaching with the Laurel Crescents again and the rings. I'm doing a boy layout and a girl layout. And um, I'll take it with me. And if I can set up the camera and do it, I will. Because she can't have me there at night. Just in the daytime. But I... I know uh, oh, I had a piece of paper to do. Oh, there it is. I put all this stuff over here for the second half of the kit. I try to stay organized. Okay, here we go. So um, I'm going to show you how I shade a terracotta pot because that's what we're going to make next. Um, so I may be going down there and Dawn left Judy well off, so she pays for everything. She pays for my flight, for me to come down, to be there for her. That's what it was. I'm, someone's leaving me a message. That's why. Next time, I will turn off the sound. I don't want to reach up there and do it. Well, maybe I can. It's ringing like crazy. Okay, I turned off the sound. Okay, I just traced the terracotta pot. I didn't have any dark terracotta, so we're gonna do a light terracotta. Now this is weird, but I like bright colored pots also. So I'm gonna do my other little pot in a stripe with the oranges and blues and browns and crazy colors. We'll see how this turns out. Because I have all color, oh, that's cute. Kinds of colored pots on my porch. So I think I finished my parrot story. We adopted a second parrot. My first one died. They said the doctor, after we invested a mere fortune trying to save her life, um, said he'd never seen it, a 10 year old parrot have heart issues. But they did a biopsy afterwards, uh, not a biopsy, a uh, postmortem, because my husband was crying, thinking he killed the bird with what he was feeding at her, how she got into stuff. I don't know what he was worried about. Uh, I told him, honey, you didn't do anything. But the postmortem showed that half of her half, half of her heart was damaged beyond repair. Um, and it had been like that since birth. 
and we didn't know it. And we have her seen by a vet. Our vet comes from Chicago. Um, he was a avarist, a, um, travel, a vet in Chicago Zoo, and then he retired. And he has family out this way, so he comes out west. And he stops at different pet stores and along the way, and he sets up his temporary people's garage in their house, wherever he can find somewhere. And he um, takes calls and it pays for his vacation. Okay, so I'm going to take, get out my reds. Sounds weird. I have one, two, three, five. Five of these boxes. This is got fired brick, crackling fire. I don't know which one of these is bad. I think they're pretty close. I think I know I'm going to do fired brick. So I told her daughter when she called. Okay, here we go. This is what the inks do. Didn't matter that I didn't have a dark piece of paper, did it? This is doing it for it. Now, I'm even going to take and shade it like that. Oh, I just heard it. My um, stupid chair, I've taken it apart, I've oiled it, I've tried everything. It squeaks, sorry. My bird is chirping in there because it's normally the time I bring her in here to sit with me. I'll be going, Mama, come here, not taking me in. Now I'm going to take that ground espresso. Put a little brown to it. Not a lot, just a little. Okay. With our real barrels dry. Real barrels dry. Okay. One thing. Get out my little curl, and I'm going to try this brown. Oh, it's not dark enough for me. I'm going to use the black, not black, gel pen. Can you hear? She just whistled. She's talking to my husband. Oh, to Day she was so talkative. Hi. She has about five, five different voices. She has. Now when I'm drawing along the edge, I'm barely touching the pen and it right along the edge. As close as I could get. I have this plastic down, so it's okay if it gets dirty. Okay. That was black. The other one's not black. There's my pot. But it also has little dots on it. So where the dots were that I traced, I'm going to mark them again because I didn't mark them very dark. Linda, what would you have done if you're still with me? I don't know if you are. 
what would you have done different to the pot um, to make it look like a terracotta pot? When you use your uh, liquid pearls, uh, they're hard to find now. Um, it's an old brand. Uh, Nouveau makes them now. They're called dimensional um, pearlescent paint. No, step away just a second. She's in the other room? Yeah. So the reason we can hardly hear is my husband has it way in the living room, away from here, so she can't be heard. Um, so Nouveau has theirs, which are very, oh, I, I tested it over here. Always test it on an, another piece of paper. So I'm just gonna put these on. And what you do is you squeeze lightly, touch it and pull back. Touch and pull back. And you can make them as small as you want and as large as you want. And I think there's one right there. So I'm going to do like that. So let's see if Linda answered me. You did great on the pot. Okay, so the boy layout, if I have to cancel, um, there you go. That's my little terracotta pot. Now, liquid pearls have to dry. They have to set up. So we won't be able to place this or do anything with it until it does. So I'm going to put it over where the wheelbarrow was. And I'm going to put this here. <laughs> Can you hear her? She's just going crazy. Usually she doesn't talk at night. She's a morning. I'm going to set it here just so you can see what it's going to look like. I'll just make sure I don't put my hand in it. See, that covered up my cuts except for my one right here. Okay, we're almost done with our design here. I also have um, the little spade, which I was gonna do. That's what the red was for. Where did I put that red? Oh, I threw it back down here. I was gonna do the silver, just like the wheelbarrow, and I was gonna put a red handle on it. And then um, I think Linda, when you did it, or one of the gals on Kiwi uh, wrapped it with rope here. It was really cute. So I was going to put that right there. And this is actually going to go further over eat like that. Okay, we're done with that. And there's my other pot. And take my brown. That'd be a new pot. It's got enough brown from when we worked before to be able to. So you can do that pot any color you like. So I have several different greens here. I have the green that's the same as this, my other pot, and I have a light green. So I wanted this to look like a fern. So I'm gonna trace this. Back to the parrot story. Les did live for another year and get to visit with Jade and he went very peacefully in his sleep. And We were very happy to know that Jay, um, he had one lady that wanted Jade, but she was a breeder and all she wanted him for, he was at the prime age in his thirties, that's their prime age for breeding. So she wanted to make him a breeder and Les didn't want that because they keep him outside and they keep him caged and they don't get to get out and play. and play with toys and they're not a pet, they're a breeding bird, completely treated different. So 
Les told me. Now, don't you tell um, Jade that he had an opportunity to be a breeder instead of a pet because he missed out on all that sex. I don't want him to know. I thought it was so funny. I said, don't worry, Les, I'm not going to tell him that he could have had a girlfriend or two. Um, Jade's very happy. He loves my husband. We put up with each other. I just have to be cautious around him. Um, he'll get on a stick. I just don't put my hand anywhere near him because he's very temperamental about me. So we have come to a happy agreement. Um, I'm going to use a different green this time. I'm going to use um, teal pink. It's avocado green. The other one would work, but it's a lot darker. Um, and I have a stick. It's not here. And he'll get up on the stick. If I'm giving him food or I'm putting him on the stick, he's fine. Boy, I tell you, you he doesn't eat his dinner until I'm cooking, and then he watches to see what I'm cooking. He's a pasta. He loves his carbs. He loves his pasta. He likes his bread. Um, he likes bagels and crackers, only wheat thins. And he watches me. And if I sit down and try to eat um, or any kind of rice. Okay. So I went around the outside. Now I'm going to do my trick with the side ink. And there's our green ring. Now, what I picked out for in here was these cute little tulip looking plants. And they're just a little bit different. So I was going to use the stem on this one and the two tops on this. And then I was going to do green right here. And the green right here, I'm going to do again. You can see I made grass out of this one. Save my pieces. Never know when they'll come in handy. I think that one's shot. Okay. See, I took the furthest corner, so I still have a piece left over that I can use. Oh, uh, the boy layout. The boy layout and the girl layout is the exact same design, and I just show you how using different paper and different um, pictures will completely change it. So we're going to do that, and I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to pull it off down at her house. Um, I haven't even mentioned anything to Kiwi Lane because it may turn out if she stays in the hospital and she's not coming home for me to take care of her, that I wouldn't have to go home, go down there on Monday. Her daughter's down there now, and I was going to fly down Monday, and her daughter would pick me up at the airport, and then when it's time for the daughter to leave that night. Okay, so the peel paint doesn't show up in this doctor one. So I'm going to go back to, there's two colors I use a lot, pine needles, oh, there's a couple, mood line, no, I'm going to use pine needles, it's very dark, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, now we're talking. It has to be an ink that really contrasts to give it that three-dimensional look. It almost is so much that the original color doesn't show, but it does. This one I'm going to go around because it needs a little bit of uh, to make it stand out. The other one I didn't go around, but I probably... Well, later, probably won't like it. 
So I was going to put this one here, this little guy here, and then I was going to flip that and put. Oh, oh, see what I did? Ah! And I was going to put this one here. Now, remember I said this has to dry, and I was going to be careful. Well, I wasn't careful, but let me show you. It's three quarters the way dry. If you make a mistake with it, don't try to take it off while it's wet. Wait till it dries, then take a sharp tool, and you can pop it off. I only goofed up two. That's not bad. I've done worse. You have to take a little bit of the paper. Doesn't hurt. Okay, now I can go back and put it back on and keep my hands out of it. When you first put it down, it makes this little, I call it a nipple, pointed. When it settles, it makes the pearl look. At first, it doesn't look like it's going to make a pearl, but it does. Okay, so the last thing that I had, gosh, it seemed like I'm missing something. That's because there's no pictures there. I'm going to put those pictures back so you can see how cute. I mean, these pictures would work. It's just that I would use something a little bit more boy because there's grass in the background, there's flower. Eh. Let me slide this under and see. I went and looked at hundreds, it took me hours of pictures to find garden, but because I take so many garden pictures, I get so excited, I do them up right away. Well, there's nothing wrong with this being a boy. I'm gonna turn this blue so the cut is right there and the plant, whoa, shoot. I'm get it centered. Before I goof this up good. Well, see there? Now, you heard me say I'm kind of anal. I'm going to put a flower here. But if you didn't like that and it was too plain, you can flip it over and do the plaid. Let's try that. If that's And it would make it much more boy. Even with a girl hat. Let's get this up there. I kind of like that. Let me see what you guys say. Scrapbook. Uh, Scrapbook.com also have pots of color. Oh, yeah. Watch me grow. That's a cute. I, I, oh, you like the plaid. I kind of did too. Deborah, are you still with us? Do you like the plaid? What do you guys think of the boy picture with it? 
those are the pictures that I had to do next and I was going to do it with something else. But now see here, it, he's at a slide. Oh, she's in the background. Look at that. She's over there. Um, maybe that's the water fountain and he saw her, but he was playing on the playground and then he saw she needed water. So he went over there. It says the word park, Spokane County. This is up in Spokane, Deborah. Okay, they like the plaid. Oh, pots of color or like liquid pearls. Okay, so what I was going to say before I got flipped that over is if you think that's too plain, you could also put some flowers if it if you wanted it more girly to go with the flowers here i'm just going to make one flower oh this is the pink that i was going to use for one of these flowers because it's kind of pink here and then i was going to make a yellow flower on the other one. Oh, i know what i was going to do wait a minute I, I just remembered something else i bought let me get it let me get it hmm. I just found a fall leaf on the floor. Uh, let's see. When I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday, I picked up, I had a collection of flowers. Uh, all sizes, especially little, because I like to put little flowers. And that was one of the things I've never been able to replace. I bought these. Paper Studio again, half off. They were five dollars, so I only paid two fifty. And I thought that maybe they would be cute in the wheelbarrow. Now they're all white, but they have different centers. And what I would do to bring more color is maybe take and make another one of these little plants that we just made. I don't wanna put my finger in the middle of this stuff again. And tuck that in there and put some greenery in it and have some white flowers. What do you think of that? That's cute too. Oh, did I lose you? I'm plugged in. Oh, is that your doggy or your kitty? Linda, Gracie. I don't know why I see you guys talking, but I'm not there. Let me see. Well, we lost connection. I know I lost me too. I don't know why the Zoom stopped. Oh, it shows pause. I don't know why it's paused. I'm afraid to take it down. I'm back. I think I'm back. Yay. I don't know what I did. Miss tapped. I, I don't know the first thing about this crazy stuff. Do you girls see me? I see me.
check it out. Tell me if I'm there. I'm just going to do this flower. I'm using a thank you flower and the garden frills flower. Oh, I was going to show you one more thing. If you haven't watched one of my lives before. Oh, good. Trish says I'm back. Trisha, Eaton. Trisha, where are you? Where are you from? I don't remember seeing your name pop up before. Okay, they like the little flower in the wheelbarrow. Okay, then I probably will do those. So, did you guys answer me about the boy pictures? Are they silly? Should I save this layout and put pictures of my garden? Because I have flowers galore on my porch that I take pictures of all the time. I know you guys have seen them. Or do you think these pictures look okay? Okay, I'm still making a little flower here and I'm gonna make another flower and show you. Because I wanna do the shading on here. I'm sure I've lost everybody on the East Coast. Eight o'clock is the latest I'll go, but we're almost done. Okay, I'm gonna take a color that's called honey, honey, wild honey. I'm gonna take wild honey. I did a um, basil card stock because it has texture to it. And then I did um, a flat card stock. So that'll give it three dimensional. Again, let's see how much I'll do it. And I'm gonna take the orange. We got too much junk here. Try to clean off my area. So I'm not making those flowers. Um, I showed you what flowers I was gonna use. I will be posting a picture tomorrow um, on Facebook of the finished product because I'll finish it tonight. I start working at eight o'clock and I work till midnight, four hours. And sometimes I'll get involved watching HGTV and I'll say, oh, just one more, just one more. And I try to cut it off at one. My husband says, did you come to bed late? I look at him like, the. He goes to bed at nine o'clock. Do I come to bed late? You know, I'm always later than you. So what's late? I wake up at 8.30, no matter if I go to bed at 10. Well, if I go to bed at 10, I don't go to sleep. I have to read a book or do something because the scrapbooking is my unwind. And I always watch TV while I scrapbook. But now I'm talking while I scrapbook. So I'm going to pop this up. Move a little. Oh, and on these flowers over here that I bought, I'll pop those up too. And I'm going to get back out those two colors. I'm going to put a yellow one in. And there's my flower. Now, it has nothing to do with any of the colors that are in there at this time. So, the way I tie it in, let me get rid of these flowers before I lose them. 
is, I could do blue, but I'm gonna look for the apricot. Oh, you know what? I think this would work. Try. So I have been demoing. Deborah, I'm gonna do the bigger flower. I've been demoing with the uh, one inch flower punch that I buy on Amazon. And I just ordered and got the one and a half inch. Even though it says it's only a half inch bigger, it's bigger. <laughs> I'll show you the difference. It's made by Bera Bera, B I R A B I R A, and they're on Amazon. And you just put in flower punch, Bera Bera flower punch. I use these all the time. They have a catch down here. So that's the one inch, and that's the one and a half inch. And I make them three dimensional by taking, you can take a pen. I use this tool, my piercing tool, and you roll it. And you roll it. And you stick it. And you offset the petals. And you get yourself some bling. And you take I'm gonna try rusty hinge and see if it's dark enough. Oh, now see I set it down. That was wild honey. Rusty hinge. And see if it's dark enough to show up on here. It did on the flower pot. I'm going to get a little darker. I'm never happy. I'm going to go back to my. Where did I put? Oh, here it is. Crack clean. Crack clean campfire. I want it to show up around the edges. Better. Much better. There we go. It just gives it enough oomph. That's how I make those flowers. This one makes a much smaller flower. Now that flower picks up the color of this flower and offsets the yellow. Look at the mess I have here. I have everything in the kitchen sink out. Let's see, that's that one. And that's that one. Okay, so I'm going to leave that plaid. I'll put this up tomorrow. I'll finish doing my greenery over here. I'll make my little garden spade. I'll put, finish my flowers. So I think that's pretty much it.
Stacy. Hi. Oh my gosh. My daughter just came on. I wonder how she found me. You're the one that's talented, silly. Johnny, thank you. Joni, Molly, thank you. Oh, hi, Josie. Oh, good for you. You're in Georgia and you're still up hanging in there with me. Someone, oh, someone has to go to bed. Paula. Okay. So, um, Paula thinks that the little, that Sage, that's my grandson, he looks good in the middle of these pictures. I do too. Um, I get tired of doing flowers and flower pages. And he loves to garden. And his dad has a big, big, huge garden in Boise. Well, not Boise. They don't live in Boise. I kept saying that. Sun Valley, Idaho. <clears throat> and so it's quite appropriate for them. I like how the title, A Garden is a Friend You Can Visit Anytime. I'm hoping that I'll be able to next Wednesday join you guys and um, I'll be putting up a, a picture, I already have it done, of what I'll be working on for the boy layout, even though this turned out to be a boy layout. <clears throat> and I think, um, do you guys have any other questions? Are you kind of done or do you want me to? Keep working. Thanks, Josie. Okay. Daylan, thank you very much. I'm glad that you had fun watching me do my thing and chat on. So you know all about my parrots and, <coughs> and all the things. And I hope I've, I've given you some hints on how to use some of the other products that I use. Um, we made that cute fence. Let me get it out again. In case you missed out and you joined me late, I cut a fence out of <coughs> printed um, wood grain paper, but then we did one out of craft paper and just inked it and uh, used pens on it and made it look like a fence. And um, the bonnet, we kind of jazzed it up with the bow from the Easter egg hunt. And I think I'm going to just finish this up and post it for you tomorrow. And I'm going to say bye bye. Because it's 20 to eight. <laughs> Three hours is the longest I go. And I want to go spend time with my little parrot. She's twerping in there. And I'm sure she thinks that it's time for me to ever for a while. So thanks everyone for joining me. I had a great time. Um, she's singing in there. Um, and it was fun seeing all of you from across the United States. So nighty night, as I tell my bird. Um, nighty night, sleep tight. See you guys later. Bye. And it. Oh, I do it up here.